like a cat? <laughs> Hi, movie lovers. Welcome to Old Lady Reacts. I'm the old lady, otherwise known as Michelle. I'm a huge movie buff, and this is my channel where I react to mostly action and superhero movies that I've never seen before, but also other stuff that looks interesting or new. I started the channel so I could understand the inside jokes and references in WandaVision, and I've finished the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and here we are a year and a half later still reacting. Today's movie is almost as old as I am, and that's pretty old. The first Mad Max movie came out in 1980, and I'm not sure why I never saw it. I think it was probably that I was too young to see it in the theaters, and by the time like VCRs came around, I don't think anybody had this movie. I wasn't really interested in these kind of movies anyway. But the new ones seem interesting, and I kind of want to see the Fury Road one. I think that would be fun to do on the channel, so I guess we're starting a new series. I don't think I can just watch that one or really know what's going on, can I? Like, you guys let me know in the comments if I can. But it's funny because this is the same director, George Miller, as The Witches of Eastwick, which is one of my all-time favorite movies. So if you guys haven't seen it, you need to check it out because it's hilarious. Um, he also wrote Babe. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely the, a, a multifaceted movie maker. I, I can discern nothing about him from his creation of these wildly different movies. So it's going to be interesting, I think. So before we get started, please subscribe so you can see all of my reactions and then check out my Patreon if you're interested in participating in polls, having early access to videos and watching full length reactions. Hop over there, become a patron to support the channel. All right, let's dive into Mad Max. <laughs> it's, it's very RoboCop. Anar Anarchy with IE? Can't say I've ever seen it spelled that way. <laughs> is that what cop cars look like in Australia? Or is that just for this movie? I can't say I've ever looked at, like, seen cop cars look like that before. Yeah, that wasn't a very good plane. Oh, here, here comes the, here comes the serious guy. For Christ's sake, shove over. You're blaspheming again. I don't have to work with a blasphemer. <laughs> That's what he's concerned about. <laughs> Not sure that that was a very efficient way to get around the car, but he, he should have like slid on his, on his, on his, but so that he could uh, like slide across the hood of the car like Bo and Luke Duke used to do. But that might have been after this. I can't, I can't remember when Duke's of Hazard was on TV. Was it early 80s? <laughs> of course, there's a kid in a stroller. <laughs> the baby's just wandering out in the road in the middle of the sun on a hot day. <laughs> somehow I don't, somehow I don't, I think you got a flat tire there. I can't imagine that you're going to go anywhere with any amount of speed. <laughs> Who is this baby just like wandering around? A saucepan? <laughs> is that what that was? <laughs> Metal damage. Brain damage, huh? Are you listening? So they're all on the same radio channel? Let this <laughs> This guy's like, come after me, come and get me. He knows who I am. I am the night rider. So are these guys like cr on crazy drugs or something? Like what's makes what's why are they so crazy? Yeah, get get in your seat and put your seatbelt on. <laughs> Why is he like crying now? I'm so confused. No, and of course there's barrels of 
<laughs> fuel so there's a huge explosion oh well <laughs> what <laughs> oh dear why is she playing a tenor sax Uh, why does the baby have a gun? The halls of justice need a little polishing up, I think. What? <laughs> He's riding that with a broken leg? <laughs> nitro. <laughs> We're acting like the nitro. Things. That was in, uh, what is it, Fast and the Furious? That was it. Very few of these guys actually look good in that leather jacket. It's hard to carry it off if you've got a big beer belly. I'm, real, I'm not sure where this is going. Very weird. <laughs> Puppy. Nice eyeshadow. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> so weird. Where do we find this agent? That looks like, uh, oh, what's his name? Liev Schreiber. Must have cut his heart out. Eh? Oh, not from the front, though, he doesn't. I mean, maybe a little bit. I don't know. That's not Liev Schreiber, though. It's too old. It'd be too old in 1980. The night rider. <laughs> Remember him when oh. you look at the night sky. Okay. Anything you say? Anything I say. It's like so intense. <laughs> now ruin your tires. Oh dear, well that's not very nice. Then that's a fancy car. So it's interesting to me how, you know, we see it with Robocop for sure and and um, uh, Terminator, I think. Ro like roving bands of senselessly violent criminal types that are, that are just like crazy. They're just crazy. But at some point, in the 80s who the bad guy is in movies changes at some point in the 80s in especially even in comedies the bad guys shift from these like scary roving bands of criminals and gr gangs and all of that it shifts to like the government like i'm thinking like okay so this is like an anarchy like post apocalyptic whatever but when you compare that to like the post apocalyptic world of say like the hunger games where the bad guys are clearly like the government controlling people and all of that like even movies like working girl or 9 to 5 i'm trying to think of of comedies from back then even when i was just watching a reaction to trading places <laughs> woman just screaming in the background <laughs> like okay they're trash in the car we get it yeah <laughs> and it's like the, the criminals aren't even they're not even they're just like being violent to be violent they're not like they're not like trying to rob they're, they're robbing people of course but that's like not their main intent so we how do we understand what they want which is such a made-up criminal element. 
Like that's not really what how it happens. There's a there's a I'm wondering when that shift happens. Anyway, I keep going on and on about it, but you guys know what I mean. <laughs> How does she breathe in that little thing? I bet she looks. Yep. Hey, fella, hey, stop! <laughs> what? John Adam, he's skull man. He ain't never come back. Woo! <laughs> it's like, it's, it is very much like Robocop. It's like the, the, of such a, a clear example of what people were really afraid of back then. Which is, oh my god, they took bad drugs and went crazy. Night Rider! Well, well, well. <laughs> this is so weird. I'm not sure I'm understanding what's happening, but okay. Oh, he survived? The, that the pan in the throat there? He's healed pretty well, I guess. Yeah, I don't know that beating up the lawyers and all that is a good idea, but okay. It's funny because it feels a little bit like a throwback to West Side Story. You not a good kiss there. Don't don't lick the, her nose. I'm so confused about what's really happening here. <laughs> like I'm looking for like allegory or like some kind of symbolism or It's like there's it's there's no exposition about who these people are or why they're in the situation or why they are the way they are. It's all just like style. <laughs> like there's no explanation for the style. Like it's not bad, I guess. I don't know. It just like it seems so odd. You know, what are, what what are we doing? <laughs> Tried to burn his arm on purpose, and I like, could only do it for a second. Like me, Johnny. Uh oh. That is unfortunate. Like, he must be like all burned up because if he can't like even have the sheets on him, oh dear. Yikes. I don't know if I want to see this. Goodness. Do I want to see this? <laughs> okay, they don't say it, show it. Okay. But yeah, so clearly like burned to a crisp, I'm sure. The light right on the eyes. I love it. Those leather pants have got to be really, really hot and uncomfortable and sticky. <gasps> Puppy! Don't they have a kid? Where's their kid? Sprogo has talked me into buying him an ice cream, so uh, I think I'll see <laughs> yeah. you later. Yeah, the baby wants an ice cream, sure. Oh. <laughs> He's a good driver, at least. Oh, the baby's loose in the back? Oh, Lord. Oh, it's a puppy. Oh, it's a puppy. Yeah, there's a puppy on the screen. Mama likes puppies. Speed is just a question of money. How fast can you go? <laughs> I suppose that's the that's the Fast and Furious motto, I guess. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I just let the baby wander around the back of the car. What you got there, mate? <gasps> what? <laughs> oh, they took the guy's hand off? Drive it away? Yeah, that's not gonna go over well. Sounds okay to me, Jess. No. If Ziggy says so, believe me, it's okay. Maybe just like get the heck out of Dodge, though. You know, probably best to just just drive away as far as you can. So is she not taking the baby with? How far away is this beach? Oh, she had to walk all the way down. She How did she get down there? Oh, that duck is so full of dirt and sand. Oh my goodness. What the hell? Oh, the poor woman with the braces on her legs and stuff. Oh my. Where's the baby? Okay, they've like completely forgotten about the baby. Like these two are in the house and those two are out in the woods. Where's the baby? Like it took her that long to think about where the baby is? It's Kundalini. And Kundalini wants his hand back. <laughs> I think that's a losing battle getting the hand back, buddy. Sorry. Jesse, Jesse, you've not got a sense of humor. No, not really. I suppose you don't need a sense of humor when it puts The only trouble is, though, is that if you should lose the face. Oh, no, we don't want to lose the face. No, let's not go there. So they don't have any guns? Maybe that's an Australia thing. Or or an early 80s, late 70s thing. There weren't that many guns around. They could get all the bad guys with one shotgun. Oh, he doesn't have a car to go after him now. Oh, are they leaking gas? Uh-oh. That's not good. I'm gonna catch on him, catch up to him pretty quick. Did she get one? No. Oh dear. Oh, just ran right over him. Okay. People do always lose their shoes in car accidents and things like that, don't they? Never understood how that happens. You know, it's interesting that that doesn't happen for an hour and 15 minutes. There's only like 20 minutes left of the movie. I lost a kid. Listen, oh, the kid's dead. Right. Okay, that's tell awesome. Him not to worry. Tell him he wants to talk. So the wife might live, though. But yeah, it's interesting that, that that's like the end of act two rather than usually it's like that happens in the beginning and he, they lose you know the main character kind of loses their sense of proportion and goes crazy and kills everybody and then they come back at the end uh, <laughs> he's stealing gas <laughs> it's clever i guess Don't light a match, man. You got gas all over your hands. <laughs> Why does he have that dummy on the back of his bike? It seems like cumbersome at best. <laughs> I'm just gonna bowl him right off the road. Oh, 
That'll do it. Did we, did we, how did he have those pictures? I'm confused. Did I miss the, him dropping them when he, when they were there getting, getting the tire? So now he's on the scary road. It's a trap. Oh. Uh oh. Where'd they come from? Oh, just out, out of the way. Out of the view. Oh, that was right on the knee. Ow. Oh, they, they roll over his arm? <laughs> okay, maybe grab it with your other arm then. Easy. I know what I'm doing. Did you though? Is that him like a cat? <laughs> well, you got it. It's a double barreled shotgun. I think you got one shot left. Maybe take it to that guy. Hurry up. <laughs> Maybe just try to like roll on the ground instead of. Oh, geez, the. There's a buzzard on the body already? That was like a minute and a half. Oh, that's not a buzzard. That's like a hawk <laughs> or a falcon. <laughs> okay. Did they, were they trying to imply that that was a buzzard? Better hurry up. Before he disappears or you pass out. Oh, semi. Oh, and squished by the semi. Okay. Yikes. I think he's done for here. Yeah. Now I gotta go back there and get the other guy. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Semi Driver, doing your job. You <laughs> you're screwed now. Oh, what's that? And the bike. Oh, don't step on the bridge. What? What the heck happened? Hi. Hey, man. This, this, oh, this isn't what it looks, man. <laughs> Pretty sure it's what it looks like, dude. Not for anything. What are you? Oh, what are you doing, man? Oh, was that his lighter? Did he wear it around his neck? What are you doing? Was he gonna saw? It'll take you ten minutes to hack through it with this. Now, if you're lucky, you can hack through your ankle in five minutes. Go. Oh, he didn't give him a choice. To cut off his own foot, or or make a little spark on if he is because because if he tries to cut off the cuff, it might make a spark. I don't know if I'd give the guy a choice. I think I would just shoot him. But you know, he could he, the, the, he, the guy could get out of it, and then you'd have to like hunt him down but maybe that's for the sequel whoops are there any more of the biker guys left i don't think there are did we get them all yeah that must be the end well that was not at all what i expected <laughs> <laughs> I was confused for like the first half of it, but I did eventually catch on to the style. Um, and it was interesting. I'm still trying to decide whether I liked it or not. I, I didn't love it, but I'm not hating it. I'm not mad about it. It had a very clear vision and the director had some very determined stylistic choices that they made. I, I just wish it had been a little bit more specific about why the bad guys were crazy, like why the world was like that and what the greater environment of the universe was that influenced the action and the motivations of the characters. 
Like, I don't usually ask for more exposition, but in this case, I think it might have benefited the story a little bit. But like I was saying, like the lack of goals and logic in the bad guys, it's just very indicative of the fears and anxieties of that time period. People were afraid of bands of roaming criminals that were like crazy high on drugs. And it was just, you know, generic fear mongering by the media and the government. And because people weren't used to fully questioning what they were told on the news yet. Um, they didn't really have a way of seeking out further information from the short kind of sensationalist news stories on, on, in their newspapers, even if they did want to know. And this movie reflects that. I think the filmmakers in this era really picked up on that idea that crime was rampant and drugs were making people crazy and there was roving bands of criminals everywhere because, you know, it makes a good story like that. You know, if it bleeds, it, it leads kind of, you know, and it does in movies too. Um, and there was a fair amount of crime back then. I don't want to discount that because the, the, the economy was a mess and then there was an oil crisis and wars and multiple political crises and all. So it, it makes sense to me that so many kind of dystopian movies focused on crime and violence that came out during that time. And Wikipedia says about writer, director George Miller, that he was a medical doctor working in a hospital emergency room. So he saw way more than his fair share of the ravages of like crime and accidents and things. It's fascinating to me that this movie caught on so well all over the world. Like, it seems like a very weird movie to have done that. But maybe that's what people love about it. It's, it's so much more stylized than I was expecting. And because the inciting incident for Max, which, you know, it's his wife and child being killed, that really doesn't happen until the end of Act 2 or so. This feels very much like the first chapter in a trilogy, which it ended up being, as you know. Uh, but they can't have had that in mind when they wrote it, could they? Like, I'd be amazed and very, very impressed if they did. <laughs> but it has a 91% critic rating on Rotten Tomatoes, but only 70% audience score, which I think is probably influenced by younger generations like me going back and seeing it after seeing the newer ones and probably having the same reaction. Like, what am I watching? <laughs> but I got to respect this like strong, clear vision and this kind of scrappy kind of thrown together messiness and ugliness of the movie. Like they didn't feel the need to pretty it up too much. And even if they wanted to, the budget wouldn't have allowed it anyway. Um, I love this section from Wikipedia about the making of the movie. Miller described the whole experience as guerrilla filmmaking with the crew closing roads without filming permits and not using walkie talkies because their frequency coincided with the police radio. And he and Kennedy would even sweep down the roads after filming was done. As filming progressed, however, the Victoria police became interested in the production and they began to help the crew by closing down roads and escorting vehicles. Like, that's pretty cool. I like that. So yeah, I'm very curious to see the next ones and see if they can kind of keep that scrappy indie feel with the amount of money and studio backing that the next movies are bound to have, uh, which also garners studio interference, which is usually not a good thing. So I got to say, though, <laughs> before I finish up, this made me laugh. I wonder if this is where Goose from Top Gun got his name? Like, this, that was only six years after this movie, so I think it's entirely possible. But yeah, I'm just not sure how I feel about this movie personally. Like, is it good? Is it not that good? Like, I can't really say that I liked it, but I kind of enjoyed watching it. It was fascinating. Um, I will say, like, it's, it's got my wheels turning, and that, there's a lot to consider, so I keep kind of turning it over and over into my mind, and that's always a good thing. I will always give a movie credit for making me think really hard about it, and this movie has. So if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, do all the things. Check out my Patreon for exclusive content and click here to watch another of my reactions next. You guys are awesome and I love sharing movies with you, good and bad. Thanks for watching with me.